Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Babbling Books. If it's your first time here, my name is Elaine. So this video is going to be about chapter books for children. Some of these I have read out loud to my kids and some of these books are um, books that my children loved to read on their own. So I haven't read all of them. Um, I'm only going to spend about 30 seconds to a minute talking about each book or each series just to try to keep the video from being too, too long. And it is a mixture of nonfiction and fiction. So my son is 11 and he loves to read and my seven-year-old daughter is actually a reluctant reader. Um, so there will be some recommendations maybe for a child who really doesn't love to read. To start with, um, we are going to talk about Lois Lowry's The Willoughby's. Um, these books are not in any particular order when I talk about them. So The Willoughby's. So we actually saw the movie first and my kids loved it. My daughter in particular, she likes anything that um, is quirky. And this book is definitely quirky. So there are four children and their parents are neglectful. And they sort of have to take care of themselves and each other. For example, um, the two youngest children are twin boys. The mother is obsessed with knitting. And rather than knitting them each a sweater, she knit them one sweater and told them they could share it. So in this book, these four children um, plan a, well, they have a plot to basically get rid of their parents. So this book is quirky. It's humorous. It's a tiny bit dark but not in such a way that my children were, you know, scared of anything. They weren't even uncomfortable. They mostly found it absurd and humorous. So that is The Willoughby's by Lois Lowry. Lois Lowry. And then we have part one and part two, Tales from the Odyssey by Mary Pope Osborne. My son loves Greek myths and Greek tales. Um, I'm not going to talk about any of Rick Riordan's books in this video because they're so well known, but that's where his love for this topic began. So this is a retelling of the Odyssey. The language is simplified for children. A lot of the more adult topics have either been adapted or removed entirely to make it suitable for children, but the entire story is told in these two books. My son loved them because there was a lot of action and adventure. My daughter, she enjoyed this, but she found it to be a little bit tiresome um, waiting for something to happen, whereas my son was a little bit more patient. But these were very, very fun reads um, for the entire family. We read these out loud when we homeschooled during COVID. <clears throat> then we have Nancy Drew and the Clue Crew. Um, so these are for younger elementary aged children. They're very simple mysteries. The language is very simple, so it's an easy read. My reluctant reader really enjoys these. They're written by Carolyn Keene, who is the original author, but she, the, the first time these books were published was back when my mother was a child, so I'm thinking these must be written by a ghostwriter, but don't quote me on that. But these are my daughter's, one of her favorite series to read. They do not have to be read in any particular order. And they're probably suitable for, to read by themselves, first grade and second grade. It seems to be the age they're targeted towards the children being able to read it on their own. So that's Nancy, Drew, and the Clue Crew. And then we have my daughter's all-time favorite series, and that is the Creepover series. So um, my daughter loves horror, and... These are written by PJ Knight, which is just an awesome name if you write horror books. So these are not quite as, I'm going to say childish, um, or as young maybe, as the Goosebump series, but they're not quite as scary as Fear Street. They are all standalone, so you do not have to read them in order. There's over 20 books um, in this series. And on the back of each book, there's a creepo meter to let you know how creepy each particular book is. We have not found the creepo meter to be accurate, but you know, being scared is subjective. Um, 
Out of all of these that we've read, we only have come across one book that we thought was a little bit too scary for my daughter. We read these while she was six and seven. We're continuing to read them now. And that was the one about voodoo dolls. Um, the girls didn't realize that the dolls they had were voodoo dolls. And so one of them like threw the doll against the wall because she was mad. And then like the next day her friend shows up with her leg in a cast. We thought that was pretty creepy. But other than that, we haven't had any issues with my daughter thinking that they were too scary. And that is the Creepover series by PJ Knight. And those are all standalones and they're great horror books and they're modern, unlike some of the Goosebump books. So these kids have smartphones. There's one, one book where they're playing a zombie app and every time you play it, it makes zombies appear. Um, and they like do web chatting to each other and they chat on the computer. My cat just ran across and shook the tripod. Sorry. Um, so yeah, that's the Creepover series by PJ Knight. Those are great for any kids who like horror. I knocked over some books too. All right, so then we have The Enemy Above. This is by Michael Spradlin. So this is a World War II fiction novel. And it is about um, a, a Jewish boy who is trying to escape during the Nazi invasion. My son read this. I didn't, but my son loved it. Um, but he is really interested in World War II um, history. And this was his jam. So he really recommends that one. It's one of his favorite books. Then you have the I Survived series. I almost didn't, um, I almost decided not to talk about these because they're just as well known as Percy Jackson and Harry Potter. But on the off chance, um, so this entire series is a, uh, they're fictionalized histories and it's where a child has to escape a catastrophic event. So you have, I survived the bombing of Pearl Harbor. I survived the Titanic. I survived um, the Great Molasses Flood, which I'd never even heard of. So there's an entire series of these. They're all standalones. They're fictionalized history. My son loves all of these. So these are highly recommended. And then we have a nonfiction book. So this is the Guts and Glory series. This book in particular is about Vikings. I mean, it's just nonfiction. What my son likes about these is that it's not dry. It tells you stories. And there are little um, little graphs of information. There's little excerpts about particular Vikings. And then it goes into details of what the Vikings did. Like this chapter is the reconquest of England. So... These are great nonfiction books. My son loves them. Um, so yeah, if you have a nonfiction lover in the family or one of your kids has to read nonfiction for school, the Guts and Glories um, series is fantastic. Now this book is not a chapter book, but I wanted to talk about it because my reluctant reader loves it. So this is a book of poems and it's called No More Poems. Um, and it is by Dan Miller, and the art is by Dan Santat, I think is how you say his name. So my daughter has to read 20 minutes a night, which is very difficult sometimes to get her to do because she doesn't enjoy reading, but she loves reading this. So you have Weirdos of the World Unite, and it just talks about how everyone is an individual and everyone could be labeled a weirdo, and everyone's a weirdo, and you should be celebrated for your differences. And then you have, um, well, okay. So I did want to give a warning with this book because when I bought it, there were a lot of parents who were raging at this book and this author because of this particular poem. And it's called Brotherly Love. And it's about a little girl who is just fed up with her brother. So I'm going to read you a little verse so you can understand what I'm talking about. Please don't push your brother out the window, little miss. I know he's asking for it, I'm quite aware of this, but if you push your brother out the window, he'll go splat, and once he's squished, there isn't any coming back from that. My kids think this book is really funny. They think that that poem is absurd, and we just find it humorous, but a lot of parents are really angry, so just be warned that that's the sort of sense of humor this author has, but we think it's funny. 
And then we have this very big box called Horrible Histories. This box in particular is called Blood Curdling. I'm trying to make sure it's not shining. So this box contains 20 books. And each book inside of it is about a particular moment in history or a particular group in history. So you have the Smashing Saxons, the Vicious Vikings, the Gorgeous Georgians, the Blitzed Brits, the Slimy Stewart. So this is all the books that are in there. These are all nonfiction. They're all pretty, they're wedged in here super tight. They're all pretty small books, but we love these because inside of each book, there are little comic strips detailing a moment in history. The author, um, they're very tongue in cheek. Um, so you, there are a lot of the moments in history where absurd things are happen, have happened or humus, humorous things have happened. The author tells the kids about it. These are very approachable, enjoyable books. If you have a child who is reluctant to read nonfiction, um, my child this year at school, he had an entire month where that was all he could read at school was nonfiction. And so these are a great recommendation. And those are the Horrible histories. You can find these singly on Amazon or on thrift books. I just bought the box set for our homeschooling, but those are great. Oh. <clears throat> I'm back. I moved these books over to make room and I forgot to put them back. Uh, so we have Roll Dolls Matilda. So you're all probably familiar with this. If you're not, this is um, a classic, and it is about a young girl who is very, very intelligent. She's a genius, and her parents are very neglectful. They are not abusive in that they don't hit her, but they are abusive in the sense they don't, they, they say mean things to her. They're very dismissive of her, um, so just be warned of that. So this little girl, like I said, she's a genius, and she goes to school for the first time, and her teacher, Miss Honey, takes an interest in her, and that's basically where the story really takes off. The headmistress of the school, Miss Trunchbull, is this horrid woman who hates children. So this book has got some pretty, I don't want to say dark elements because it's not dark. Roald Dahl manages to write what could be some pretty horrific experiences in such a way where it's not scary to children. Like Miss Trunchable throws a girl over a fence using her pigtails, which sounds scary. But my kids were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe she could get away with acting that way. You know, they weren't frightened. Both of my kids loved this. I read it out loud to them when my daughter was five and my son was six. So I do highly recommend this one. Your, your child could very easily read it on their own. Um, some of the words in here are large. Um, so, you know, you know your kids. And then we have Escape from Chernobyl. This is one of my son's favorite books. It's by Andy Marino. This book is about um, the possibility of an explosion at a nuclear power plant. And the three children who are trying to escape or um, keep it from happening. I have not read this. My son has read it four or five times. This is his go-to book when he doesn't know what else he wants to read. He highly, highly recommends this one. So that's why I'm passing it along. Tales of the Greek Heroes by Roger Lancelin Green. So each chapter tells you about a Greek hero. Um, and just in case you would like to know, so you have Hermes and Apollo, Prometheus, Zeus and Hermes, Typhon the Terrible, Adventures of Dionysus, uh, quite a few Hercules stories, The Golden Apples and the Hounds of Hell, and that is Tales of the Greek Heroes, one of my son's favorite books. He started reading Percy Jackson and asked me to find him more books about Greek heroes, and that's what we found for him, and he enjoyed it. And then you have this massive stack of books. This is the Shadow Squadron series by Carl Bowen. So these are, um, you do have to read these in order. Book one is, do 
Do I have it here? I think book one is Sea Demon. Yeah. So this is a series about a um, group of military special forces. They remind me of the G.I. Joe books from my childhood. So this group of soldiers, they have to rescue people, um, divert a disaster. There is a little bit of violence, but it's like the G.I. Joe books and the TV show. So my son <clears throat> was a very reluctant reader. He only wanted me to read out loud to him. He didn't want to read on his own. And he came across this book at the library and we got it. And ever since then, he devours books. So this series holds a very special place in my heart for that reason alone. But if you have a child that's interested in reading about military um, fiction um, or action and adventure, The Shadow Squadron by Carl Bowen, Sea Demon is book number one, is a great place to start. And then you have Monster Madness by Dean Laurie. So this is actually book two. Oh, I have two books there. It's actually book two in the Nightmare Academy series. I couldn't find book one. Um, my son's room is under construction. So all of his stuff, including his books, are just spread all over our house right now until he can get back in his room. Um, this is basically, I have not read this one, so the, the way he explained it to me is it's just kids fighting monsters. It is not scary, it's just a great fantasy action and adventure book. It's a larger book. Um, he read this, the series in fifth grade, and he highly recommends it to other children. And then we have, um, <clears throat> I'm gathering them up. Sorry, I'm back. So then we have uh, four books I want to talk about that my children are looking forward to reading. Ender's Game. So this is a book about a child who, what is it, what do they call it? Um, he's at battle school. So they believe they're training for battle by playing these war games on a video game. And of course, a lots of things are revealed as the book goes on. This is book one of the series. I read this entire series back in middle school so I do not remember a ton about it but I remember being amazed and thinking it was absolutely fantastic and then you have the whiz pop chocolate shop this is about a group uh two siblings twins who have inherited a house above a boarded up chocolate shop and come to find out their great great uncle is a famous chocolatier but he didn't make just any kind of chocolates he made magical chocolates this is a book that my daughter wants to read. She has a thing for magical food, which leads us to Bliss um, by Catherine Littlewood. This is a story about these uh, children. Their family owns a bakery, and one day their great aunt shows up on a motorcycle and makes them this delicious meal, and they are somehow introduced to a magical cookbook, and they start... Sorry. A magical cookbook, and they start making... Um, food from the recipes and all sorts of shenanigans happen. My daughter picked this one for us to read this winter. And then you have Scandalous Sisterhood of Prick Willow Place. Um, so this book is about a group of girls and their headmistress is murdered. You can see her lying there on the floor. And they want to stay where they're at. They want to solve the mystery. So they have to hide this incident from the adult authorities and their parents and it looks like it either takes place in Victorian times or Edwardian times. It's sort of, you kind of have to guess from their clothing. We haven't read this yet, but my daughter and I are really looking forward to reading this. And I wanted to mention three books that I do not have with me. The first one is Tripods. This is a book I read when I was in sixth grade. It's book one of a series. It may actually be a trilogy. This is a great introductory sci-fi if you have any kiddos interested in science fiction. It's very accessible and easy to read and it's full of action and it's a short book. So these aliens, metal robotic aliens, have taken over Earth and humanity is now, you know, the servants of these aliens. And on your 13th birthday, you have a capping ceremony where you go out and the tripods put this metal cap on your head and basically at that point, you they take over your 
your mind and your will. And one boy decides that that will not be his fate. And he and another boy decide to flee to the mountains where they've heard rumors of resistance fighters and rebels up in the mountains. I loved this. I think your kids would love it too. And like I said, it's a great introductory sci-fi. And then after that, you have these books by Alan Gratz. My son loves this author. I have not read any of these, but my son got two from the book fair. And then he went bananas over this author and asked me to get every single book I could possibly find. He's read all but one. He loved all of them and he highly recommends these. He started reading them in fifth grade. The books are a little bit bigger. Um, so these are longer chapter books, but he highly recommends them if you like action and adventure. And then Rats of Nim. So this is an older book. It's probably considered a classic. And this is a story of a mouse family. So the mouse family lives in a cinder block that's partially sunken into the into a field, a farmer's field. And every time before the um, planting season starts, all the animals that live in this field go live in their other homes. They find another home to live in to avoid the plow. But one of the mouse children was bit by a spider. and He's very, very ill and the mother cannot move him. So she goes to the owl and she asks him, what can I do? And he tells her, go to the rats in the rose bush, which she's very reluctant to do. Um, the rats that live in the rose bush, all the animals know the rats are a little bit different. And that kind of adds a little bit of a kind of a, a creepy vibe almost. And... She goes to the rats and the rats tell her, if we cannot move the child, we must move the house. So they come up with a plan to move the uh, mouse family's home out of the way of the plow. And that's sort of how the story begins. But it's very, it has a cute feeling and a kind of a cozy feeling, but also a very serious feeling. And it's a very intelligent book. My son loved this one. I think he was seven when we read this one at bedtime. My daughter was a little bit less in love with it, but she thought it was okay. <laughs> so that's it. So hopefully you've got some pretty good recommendations. Let me know if you or your kids have read any of these and what they thought. I'm always looking for recommendations for my kids. So if you have one, please feel free to comment below. And I hope to see you guys here again. Bye.